All right. Um, if you guys want to scoot a little bit more this way to the right, that'd be great. Take my right. Okay. You guys what about age level we got here? Is it fourth and fifth? Fifth and sixth? Oh, okay, fourth and sixth. Okay, good. All right, cool. Um, it's good to see you guys. Uh, my name is Mr. Peace, and uh, I came today to talk a lot about uh, responsibility and character. So I, I know I've heard uh, you guys have learned a lot about character traits. Uh, what are some of the traits you guys have learned? Yeah. Teamwork, respect, yeah, what you? Uh, honesty. Honesty? Okay, yeah. Did you hear me? Did you just clap? Okay. All right, cool. Uh, anybody else? I think someone mentioned friendship, de uh, determination, things like that. Oh, let's get on. Courage? Yeah. What did you, you guys say? Oh, did I say that already? Oh, he said? Okay. Never give up. All, all those things, yeah. Cool. Um, so real quick too, okay, before I begin my talk today and show you guys some of these exercises and uh, hopefully do some music for you at the end, I uh, just want to let you know that every, every breath that I take is worth your time. Okay. So I was heading to school, heading to Cole Cabin this morning, and it was kind of really late, so I was driving sort of fast, right? And I'm going, driving, you know, at a good speed. And all of a sudden, this guy passed me. Like, out of nowhere, just passing me. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no, you did not just pass me. You did not just pass me. I don't want to get past. So I'm like, I'm, I'm like, going to pass him. I'm scooching up a little bit faster, going faster, right? I'm going to pass him back. So I'm like, boogie on grandma, and I'm like, see you later, all right? And boom. In front of me, a whole family of deer. And I was like, oh shit, I swerved down to the right, almost hit him, you know, I was an inch away, and my heart's racing, my heart's beating real fast, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know what? So I pulled over to the side of the road, and I just had to kind of catch my breath, catch my composure, and I'm just sitting down, just sitting there, and I just kind of chill out, and all of a sudden I heard this knock on the window, so, and I look over, and it's, it's that deer. He's like with his hoof and his little, like, his little paw. He's like kind of like rolled roll window down, you know? I'm like, whoa! And the deer's just like coming to the window. I'm like, what's going on, man? He's like, Mr. Peace? How'd you know my name? He's like, I saw your license plate. I'm like, oh! But he's like, did you see what just happened? And I said, yeah. I mean, I just got passed. I don't want to get passed and disrespected like that, so I'm going to pass somebody back. And I almost parked my car. He's like, no. You almost just killed me and my family. Because you were so concerned about trying to run up somebody. How many times in our life, you know, are we comparing each other? You know, like the video game system or the brand on the clothes or you know, how much money we got, like, all the things in our life. We focus sometimes more on things than we are on people. Any, any of you guys heard of Facebook? Is that, some of you guys have Facebook or heard of that, that term? Okay. So on Facebook, they got things called rankings, right? Rankings. And it's like stuff like this guy's got the best kicks, um, someone has the best smell and breath, uh, nicest teeth, nicest eyes. So my rankings last night, they dropped like about 10 or 11 points for how to spot. And I was like, are you kidding? And I was like, why? And I was like, Come on, you know? And they dropped, but I was upset. But you know, when I think back to all the things that are happening in the society, and the media, and schools, and everything, where we compare each other, that's sometimes also where a lot of times we cause each other pain. It's from comparing each other, right? So if I ask you right now, um, can you hold this for me? What's your name? Kyla? So if I ask you right now, how many of you would like a twenty dollar? How many of you would like to All right, so, uh, what if, uh, <laughs> still on? Okay, okay. Now, uh, still on? <laughs>
There we go. All right, so he wanted it. He wanted it, guys. All right. Now listen. Listen. It always bends me. It always makes me go kind of crazy, like thinking when it comes to something like money, the things, right? I'm like, oh yeah, Mr. Peace, come on, come on, make me right here, right? But when it comes to something like people, if they're not the right size, the right image in their mind, a little bit torn themselves, a little bit crippled, you know, too, too wide, too skinny, too tall, the way it's put to accept. The money is like, oh man, man, front center, front center, right? Black and yellow. Uh, that's the first thing that came around. Um, but again, people are being willing to accept this money even after I've flashed it now. And this one girl one time was like, I'll take the dog track because I don't care if she did. Um, <laughs> but again, that time that we compare ourselves to other people and sometimes tease each other because of that, bully each other because of that, is when a lot of pain happens. How many of you know one of your most painful memories? Or one of your most painful memories? How many of you know what it was? How long ago was it? Anybody else know what your most painful memory? Back here, back in March. When I was in the third grade, I was very small and came to push me out of the bus seat. You pushed me out of the bus seat, okay. All right. And then in the third grade, and you're in fifth grade. Okay, so about two years ago. Yeah, over here, let me get this guy. Yeah. It's not exactly a memory, it's a dream I dreamt from last night. Okay. I dreamt that one of the students named Roscoe, and he's not here right now, has crushed a Lego set and destroyed all the Lego words. All, all, all your dreams just got destroyed. I see. Okay. Uh, so, I can go around and let you guys know, and most of you guys, when I said, Oh yeah, I'm trying to get a little next to the Just a water bottle, water bottle. Uh, I mean, I use the restroom. But anyways, uh, <laughs> that's right. So, most of you in a matter of two seconds, raise your hand as to when your most painful memory was, okay? Which tells me, that for a lot of you, that pain is still right there. Okay? And I got people, you guys said what, you're like 10, 11 years old, 12, something? I have people that are like 90, 91, 92, 93, that I know, that they'll tell me, they'll tell me that their most painful memory was 70 or 80 years ago. But they remember it like it was yesterday. Because that pain is still raw. It's still right there. And it could be somebody who died in your family, it could be like a traumatic experience, it could be somebody teasing you. Because what happens guys, hope I don't spill this time, but what happens is when we're born, we're like an empty cup, okay? And little by little, this cup, it gets filled by other people telling us mean things, calling us names, Right? And what happens eventually when that cup gets too full? Anybody shower today? Yeah. Uh, you want to do another shower? Um, so, let's go. Oh, oh, careful. Oh, okay. Oh, the trip, the trip. Oh, no. <sighs> that thing is so intense. And we don't deal with it. We don't have enough positive things in our life to offset some of that pain, some of the negative things. And it gets right to the surface. And it's still with us every day. One of my friends, his name's Wayne. 
his most painful memory was when he was about your age. And he picked on this girl every day, day after day, okay, for like an entire school year. And 20 years later, when he was about my age, he saw her in the store. And he couldn't even look at her because of how guilty he felt from all the pain he caused to her 20 years ago. And my most painful memory, one of them, was when I was not too much older than you guys are now. And I wasn't doing the bullying, but I just stood by and let it happen. And that inaction, not doing anything, when I could have stood up for somebody, that caused me a lot of pain. So when we're talking about responsibility, we're talking about character, all these traits you guys are talking about, we have to know the impact of our action on others to really understand those two terms. You need to understand the impact of your words, your thoughts, your actions on other people. So I want you to all stand up real quick, stretch it out. Work it out. You guys can bring papers down over one, you okay? And space it out, it's going to back up a little bit probably. So put your arms up, make sure you're not touching anybody. Alright, so you guys can space out this way, space out this way, you guys can come forward, you want to go back to the left, right? Whatever works for you, okay? Right? What I want you to do, okay? You guys try this. Just try to back up a little bit more there. Here we go. Okay. So, I want you to keep your feet in the same spot. Keep them blue. Okay? And when you're ready, you guys are probably going to still space out a little more. But, when you're ready, I want you to all spin as far as you can go. Remember that spot. Like, remember coming on the wall, a person, something, a piece of grass, whatever it is, okay? That is like your spot. And that's as far as you can go, right? So whenever you're ready, do that. Just then. Keep, keep your feet. Yep. So just go like that there. Go as far as you can. If you remember that point. All right, you guys have that point you had? You guys remember it? Pretty good? Okay, good. So now, I you all close your eyes. Put your hands down, just side. Take a deep breath. Just kind of relax. Keep your feet in the same spot, keep your eyes closed. And I want you guys to all imagine that you're some of the most incredible people, incredible athletes on the face of this planet. You guys can hide your over buses, you guys can long jump 50 feet. You guys can run one minute miles. You guys can run two second hundred yard dashes. You're some of the fastest, most amazing, spectacular human beings on the face of this earth. So I want you to all envision that. Imagine that. Keep it all in mind. Keeping your feet in the same spot. Keeping your eyes closed. Whenever you're ready, I want you to spin again. Okay? Go ahead. And after you spun, keep, hold that spot. Open your eyes. How many of you guys have improved? Show of hands. How many of you guys went farther than the first time? A couple of you? Okay, good. Good, good. Give yourself a round of applause. Let's see. Good job, guys. Okay. So anybody got any ideas what happened there? Some of the people that went farther? Who went farther? I saw some hands. Yeah, you went farther? A little bit. Like, if you improved for the first time, right? How come you think you improved? Okay. Um, did you improve? How come you think you improved? I told you went farther, but did you believe that you could go farther the second time? After I told you all those things? Okay, okay. So most people, what happens is they improve about 20 to 25 percent. And the only thing that changed from the first time to the second time that you guys spun is that I told you you were all incredible, all beautiful, that I believe in all of you, right? What if I told you that you're all losers, you guys stink? You guys are going to go farther. What would happen? 
Did you guys, would you guys have done just as much, not as much? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Not as much? About one out of ten people, if I said that type of stuff to somebody, they would go farther because they want to prove me wrong. Right? Which is cool. But the other nine out of ten are probably not going to prove. So what all that took me was about ten seconds. And that's what I'm trying to let you guys in on. Is that the impact of our actions? Sometimes it just takes two seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, where we have the opportunity to empower somebody, uplift somebody, or cut them so deep that they have this pain that's going to stay with them for the rest of their lives. So again, to think about the power we have when it comes to something like that. There's a story I was speaking the other week. I was in Canton, Michigan. And this third grader came out to me after the talk. His name was Dominic. And he says, Hey, Mr. Peace, do you know who my most painful memory was? And he said, First grade. First grade. And, uh, and I asked him, Okay, well, you know, what was it? And he said that it was somebody on the bus. Can I even think about your story right there? Someone on the bus that turned around and told him that he's never going to have any friends. You know? And if you can imagine the first grade hearing that from a big bully, that hurts. So then he told me, he's like, but you know what, Mr. Peace? I said, what? Now I have best friends. Friends who care about me. Friends who think I'm important. And I know that really that bully was just hurt inside. He was just hurt inside. Probably because he was getting bullied too, you know? So it's something to think about. We also got to try to show compassion to people that are hurting. Try to understand their situation a little bit, right? This is another story too. He's getting in shape. Him and his dad were walking home after school one day through this baseball, right by this baseball field, right? These kids are playing. And Shay turns to his dad. He says, Dad, do you think I can go play with these kids? And his dad's like, yes, yeah, I mean, sure, son. But in his mind, he's thinking that the kids aren't going to want to play because, you see, Shay, he was born, he was handicapped. So he couldn't walk as fast, he couldn't run as fast as his other kids, right? So he gets up to this group of kids. It's like the 89th inning. So, and the game's really close. And Shay goes up to him and he's like, hey, can I play? And all the kids are thinking to themselves, I mean, if they take him on the team, then they're probably going to lose. One kid stood up and said, you can be on my team. And he included Shay into, the, into that game. And they lost. But you can only imagine what that meant to Shay. You know? How much that meant to be included. And so many times in his life he wasn't. Because here's what I mean. You guys are going to have the opportunity, you know, when you see somebody sit alone at breakfast or at the lunch table or on recess or in the neighborhood or at church or wherever it's at, we're going to have the opportunity to include somebody or exclude them. And if you include them and you willingly risk embarrassment and being judged by your peers, being made fun of, being teased, you put yourself in line just to include somebody else into this life, into this world that might not otherwise be included, that right there is beautiful. That right there is beautiful. So, what I kind of broke this down to is that we have a responsibility. Okay? We got a responsibility to treat everybody as our best friends and to treat everybody as 100% friends. How many of you guys have a best friend? Okay, we got a social crowd. That's great. Okay. Now, what makes that person a best friend to you? All right, good. Similar interests, cool. Right. Yeah. They don't let us <laughs> They see us normally. All right, so what, all, all, all you guys raise your hand to have that best friend, what makes that person the best friend to you? Why is that person the best friend? Is your best friend? Um, and why is, is it a she or you? And why is she your best friend? Because... 
so much. Appreciate that. So she understands you in hard times. Who else has a best friend? Yeah. What what, what person's best friend? I actually have three best friends. Get out of town. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. I got a lot of best friends too. Some of my happiness, some of my peace, some of my compassion. Okay, some of my kindness. 
And then the final leader passes back to the chair. Jacob, okay? And then Jacob gets some of his piece of kindness to the chair. Heartbeat, and just keep going and going and going like an energizer bunny. Doesn't snap. Right? So that's one thing that we have a responsibility to do is to treat everybody that we come into contact with like you treat your best friend. And number two, we have a responsibility to treat everybody as 100% friends. What do I mean by that? Let's, uh, let's get here. What's your name? Say it again. Arvella? Arvella, okay. And what's your name? Lucas. Alright, so. I'm showing with Lucas over here. You know, we're just kicking him a good time, whatever, you know, it's good. And I get a call from my boy Arvella later that night. He's like, yo, Mr. Peace, what's good? I'm like, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, how you doing, man? It's pop, man, how you doing? And he's like, hey. I saw each other with Lucas earlier today. What's up with it? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I wasn't chilling with Lucas. Come on, man. No, no. I don't think so. He's like, I saw you. Man. I saw you right now. Like, you know? And I said, no, no, I was just helping him pick up a book or something, man. That's it. That's it. You want to go uh, shoot some hoops? He's like, okay, cool. So, in that situation, in that moment in time, that's where you have the opportunity to say, hold the phone, get it to go, 30 second, right? Because right in that moment in time, I had the opportunity to either include him or exclude him. But I was just being a 50% friend. I was friends with him only when it was convenient for me, only when it was okay for me. But as soon as my other friend came along, and basically wanted me to choose between him and him. I pushed him aside. And I caused him a lot of pain. And that's what happens is, this, is if you're not 100% friend with somebody, and you're in that little like middle place, that's where a lot of hurt can happen. So you're either 0% or you're 100%. There's no in between. And that's what we have to think about. How many of you when you get ready in the winter months and the heater comes on. You get ready for school and, and, you, and you get dressed by the heater. You guys do that ever? Like it's coming on and the heat's real nice and you're like, oh yeah, it's good, okay, yeah. And then it goes off like, oh yeah, come again, come on, come on, come on, come on, come again. Right? How about some of you ladies? Some of you ladies, okay? You're laying, you're laying there. Out in the sun, like on the beach, or like, I don't know, uh, your deck or something, or the grass, sitting in some iced tea, reading a book, and like having a latte or something, like, oh yeah, the sun, okay, yeah, then all of a sudden the sun goes down the clouds, you're like, no, no, oh, Mr. Sun, sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me, oh, Mr. Sun, sun, Mr. Golden Sun. So it's, it's 
really hot and cold. And I'm like, you know, I'm getting a little bit in the shower after, and like, like, you know, it's really hot and cold like that. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden it gets really, really warm again. And I'm cool again. I'm good, okay. And then I have a toilet flush again. And I'm like, no! And now I, now I just think my roommate is just pulling a prank on me. You know, so I'm like, Nick, come on, man, you doing that? No! Wait, it happens, yeah. Toilet flushes, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, alright, so I get out of the shower. Okay. Get out of the shower, I'm like, Nick, that's my roommate. I'm like, Nick, come on, man, that's not cool, bro. I'm trying to get out of the shower here, you're just messing with that, come on. You know? So I'm looking around my place and I'm like, Nick, where you been at? Looking around, nothing, nothing. Look to the left, nothing. Come back to the bathroom, I looked to the right one last time, and there, perched on my couch over yonder, is my cat bulldog, staring at me. And I'm like a bulldog, and I'm like, no, no, couldn't be. I'm about to walk in the bathroom and all of a sudden I just raised my voice and said, yeah, it was a bulldog. I said, hold on, hold on. You talk? I'm like, what, what? He's like, yes, my son. I was trying to report him. And I said, hold on, couldn't you let us know the lady? He said, no, my son. It was more funny than that.
What would you mind doing physically if I had destroyed you things? Yes? I want you to buy me anymore than what I said no. And what if I keep saying no? Okay. All right. He's persistent. What would you I was so I'm buying you one and then what else? And you might tell my mother too. That's a possibility, because I don't like when my mom gets involved. Okay, what happened? <laughs> Sue me. Take the legal route. Okay, great. Okay, great. So we got some lawyers on our hands. We got your lawyers. Good. Okay. I probably wish you were. You beat me up. That's what I'm doing. That's what you're doing. I like it. I like that. Like that. Alright, who else? Who else will do something to me? Come on, guys. Be creative. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I appreciate that. I got that kind of stuff. What are you going to say? I owe you money. I owe you money? Okay. Tell Tim on my mom. Oh, it's not, man. Come on, man. What are your mother's involved? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And one of my friends, he went there a couple days after this earthquake hit to help with the relief efforts there, to help with the people, right? He gets there, and people who lost their homes, their cars, everything they owned, in only 32 seconds. 32 seconds, this earthquake hit and wiped out everything they had. Just like I imagine that tsunami that takes one to wipe out everything they owned. 32 seconds, that's, that, that's how long it took you guys to walk from the class down this room. And that amount of time, all they, all they had was lost. And he gets there, and they're rebuilding their homes in the same spot where the earthquake hit, on the same fault line. And he's like, are you guys crazy? Why would you, why would you even risk building on the same spot? You know, if it could happen again. And their response to him was that if we don't build here in this community, then we'll be forced to split up. And the people in our lives are more important than the things in our lives. So I have to imagine that people in Japan, you know, people in Haiti, well, after a lot of these tragedies happen, that they're going to rebuild the same spot too. Because they know it's important. Where it's people first and things second. I compare people to bowling balls and balloons. Bowling balls and balloons. You can use your Mr. Peace. Come on, man. I'm not a bowling ball, I'm not a balloon. But yes, you are. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're a bowling ball, which I have here with me, anybody go bowling ever? Bumper bowling? Bowling dark bowling? So, I got a bowling ball. People that are like bowling balls to me are people that are solid, they're strong with character, with traits that you guys were talking about, honesty, integrity, trustworthy, kind, respectful. They got morals, values, principles. People that are like balloons to me, people that are empty. And that they're just willing to go around, go along with, with the crowds. If someone's saying do this, even though it's bad, even though they know it's not right, to put someone else down, to not include somebody else on their team, they'll still do it. Because they don't have any of those character traits that you guys talk about. They're not solid with that character. So what happens if I was to throw both of these? What, what one's going to go farther? Which one? Only one? Only one? Okay. Try it. One, two, three, go. Oh, my missed point. I was actually going for that problem. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. And you think about this bowling ball goes farther. Because it's got, got more care, got more responsibility. And what's going to happen when someone who's telling you to do what's wrong comes along? A needle, we'll call it a needle, comes along. What's going to happen to the bowling ball? Not too much. What about the balloon? It's going to pop, isn't it? Right. So, that's why I keep coming back to how my character is so important. One quick story. You guys have been to the ocean before? Or to somewhere, a lake, a pond. Places that have starfish. This is starfish. That's plastic. But it's the thought of the right? Uh, there's a story about this girl. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. She was twelve. And she's by the ocean. All these starfish got washed up on the shore, like thousands, you know, because of this tide. And if the starters don't get back in the water, then they're going to die, and they can't do themselves. You know? So, one by one, she's throwing them back in, into the, into the ocean, right? And so this older man comes up to her, he's like, little girl, what are you doing? You know what I mean? There's no way you're going to be able to throw every starfish back in. There's just no way. There's thousands here. And she took another one, and then she threw another one back in the ocean. Good catch. 
you ever met in the ocean? She said, sure, that's true, but I know that at least I made a difference to this one. And that's what your lives are about, that you guys have that power to just make a difference in one person's life. Because that can mean the world to them, you know? Like it did with Shay, like it did with my friend Dominic, that you guys have seen. That's why I wrote on this paper that you had in front of you. This quote, I said, I believe in you, I know you will touch many lives during your lifetime because of your open heart. You keep your heart open, you can reach a lot of people. You guys are right my heart today. I appreciate that. We gotta get going here. Um, I wanted to close with a little hip hop if you guys are cool with that. Does that, does that work? Okay. All right, now, what I'm gonna need from you, who like to dance? Come on, put those hands up. Come on. Listen, let me break it down for you. When I'm stopping the train, when I'm stopping the train, I park my car and I get out and turn the music on. I just start, just like that. And people are like, what the hell is this? How did you even leave the I'm just like, <laughs> All right, and that's what I do. Like when I was in that shower with the whole dog, like when I got really hot, like I was moving and stuff. Like, all right, so we got nothing but love here, so yeah, you guys should want to dance a little bit. Um, but I'm going to put on a track. I need some people to come up here with me and uh, participate. But everybody can stand up. Everybody can stand up. Let's do that. Can you move my mic for a second? Yeah. 
Much love.